This episode from the life of Sherlock Holmes will be transmitted to our men and women overseas by short wave and through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Petri Wine brings you... Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. The Petri family, the family that took time to bring you good wine, invite you to listen to Dr. Watson tell us another exciting adventure he shared with his old friend, that master detective, Sherlock Holmes. And I sure wish you could listen to this story with a glass of Petri California port right at your elbow. Petri port. That's the wine that's perfect after dinner when you're just taking things easy. And say, if you've never tried Petri port, if you've never tasted that wonderful rich red wine, well, this is the week to do it. I'll tell you why. This is National Wine Week, sort of a celebration we're having to mark the return to good living. Your wine merchant is kind of rolling out the red plush carpet this week, and among other things... He wants to prove to you that you just couldn't ask for a more delicious wine than Petri wine. Why don't you take him up on it? And begin by becoming acquainted with Petri Port. You'll really love it, and so will your guests. And say, you can serve Petri Port proudly, because after all, the name Petri is the proudest name in the history of American wines. That's a fact. <laughs> Well, here's the patio of Dr. Watson's Northern California bungalow, but where's the doctor? Here I am, Mr. Bartow, out in the garden. Okay, I'll be right there. Oh, sitting by the fish pond, huh, doctor? Yes, my boy, it's rather pleasant out here for a change. Has it ever occurred to you how stupid the expression of a goldfish is, Mr. Bartow? <laughs> well, I can't say I've ever given it much thought, Doctor. Why? You see this foolish little fellow here with his silly little mouth opening and closing as though he were constantly astonished? <laughs> what is this? I thought you were a fish lover. Yes, I am. But as I was brooding over tonight's story, that goldfish seemed to be making faces at me as though it were trying to remind me of how my face must have looked. On a certain June evening in 1890. It sounds to me as if you're going to tell a story against yourself, Doctor. I am, young fellow, my lad. What happened? One Sunday morning in 1890, I dropped round to visit my friend in Baker Street. Mrs. Hudson told me that he was out, but suggested that I wait in our old rooms for his return and promised me a pot of strong tea and some buttered scones as an inducement. As I walked into the sitting room, I was astonished to see Holmes standing there, a bag in one hand and a coat in the other. My dear chap, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, Holmes. I'm surprised to see you, though. Mrs. Hudson told me that you were out. I have been, Watson, on a case. I just returned by my private entrance for some, uh, some necessary operations. Oh, could, could I come with you? My wife's away, you know, but my, my practice is quite slack at the moment. Not even my trusty old friend Watson can accompany me on this case. It's a ticklish business. The fate of two nations hangs in the balance. I must work alone. Sorry to leave you like this, old fellow. Goodbye. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Mrs. Hudson's making me some tea and some buttered scones. Can't you wait and, and share them with me? Ha, <laughs> ha. Huh? Good old Watson. You're the one fixed point in a changing age. Empires are tottering, and you talk of tea and buttered scones. Oh, I'm sorry you must be off. Oh, goodbye, old fellow. Oh, don't look so sad, old fellow. Hmm? The time is ripe. I'll tell you all about the case, and you can write it up in your memoirs. Goodbye, old boy. Buttered scones. I haven't got any appetite for them now. Did you enjoy the scones, Dr. Watson? Oh, I'm afraid my appetite disappeared when Mr. Holmes left. It did, did it? <laughs> I see you've eaten them all just the same. What? Oh, oh yes, so I did. <laughs> I've got a surprise for you, Doctor. Inspector Lestrade is downstairs. Who is he? He came to see Mr. Holmes, but when I told him he was out, the inspector said he'd like to see you. Oh, he did? Oh, splendid. I'll ask him to come up, uh, please, will you, will you, Mrs. Hudson? Aye, sir. Will you come up, please, Inspector? Uh, thank you, Mrs. Hudson. Can I butter you up a few more scones? No, 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 thank you. I, I really couldn't eat them. I'll just go and make some more the same. He'll eat them if I fix them, don't No, 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 really, thank you. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Oh, there you are, Lestrade. Yeah, hello, Dr. Watson. Here's a pretty kettle of fish and no mistake. Huh? What's the trouble? Well, I want Mr. Holmes' help on a most important case. Uh, where's he gone? Well, he's out on a very, uh, 
secret matter. You know where he is, Doctor? Well, naturally, I know where he is, Lestrade. My old friend never keeps me in the dark, but I'm not at liberty to tell you. Uh, perhaps and I could help you a bit. After all, I'm not exactly unfamiliar with, with my friend's methods. That's true, but uh, just the same. <laughs> oh, well, Doctor, two heads are always better than one. Even if one is a sheep's head, as my old mother used to say. Are you suggesting that I'm a sheep's head? No, I'm not suggesting anything, Doctor. I'm just telling you what my old mother used to say. I'm really not very interested in what your old mother used to say. Right. And, um, and now to start your problem, please. Well, it's simple enough, Doctor. A German diplomat, Graf Otto von Eldenstein is his name, is in England on a very secret mission. Graf Otto von Handelstein? Hmm. Huh. Yes, I've... I've heard of him. Pray continue. Well, this von Eldenstein staying at the manor house at Ampton Wick, not far out of London. Now, this morning, somebody slipped past his guards and threw a bomb into his study. His secretary was killed, and he would have been too, if it hadn't been that he'd left the room a few minutes earlier. Well, these second-hand investigations are very little useless, Todd. We must both go down to the manor house at Hampton Wick and examine the situation on the spot. All right. Uh, get out the timetable and look up the next train, will you? Yes. Yeah. And while you're doing that, I'll... I'll go and tell Mrs. Hudson where I'm going. All right, you are, Doctor. Here are the scones, Doctor. I was just bringing them up to you. Scones? Well, who can think of scones when an empire is tottering? Are you sure you're feeling quite well, of Doctor? Of course I am. Now, listen to me, Mrs. Hudson. If Mr. Holmes should return, please tell him that I've gone to Hampton Wick with an inspector of start to investigate the von Heldenstein business. The von Heldenstein business? Aye, Doctor, I'll tell him that. Uh, uh, did, uh, Mr. Holmes didn't, uh, didn't tell you where he was going, did he? No, Doctor, he didn't. Oh, I see. All right, well, uh, thank you, Mrs. Hudson. Thank Are you. you sure you don't want the scones, Doctor? Uh, well, uh, well... Uh, well uh, I might as well take him along. I just say Lestrade could eat him. Ah, you're the one, Doctor. <laughs> yes, I suppose this is rather exciting. Just the same, I wish I knew what Holmes was doing at this moment. Herr Sherlock Holmes. Yes, I presume Graf Otto von Hildenstein is expecting me? Yeah, Herr Holmes. He was so anxious that you would come here to the manor house. I left immediately after I got his summons. He's very weak. He has lost much blood from the injuries he received this morning. Injuries that no one knows about, eh? Nein, Herr Holmes. Mm -hmm. Only I, his old and faithful servant, knows. Uh, follow me, please. I will take you to him. Is that you, Franz? Yeah, Herr Graf. And with me is Herr Sherlock Holmes. Oh. Thank heaven you are here, Holmes. I hope I can be of service to you, sir. You can. You can be of great service. Sit close to my bed, Holmes. I have not much strength to speak. I'm listening, Herr Graf. You... You must impersonate me. Yes, so I gathered when I received your message. I am in England on a most delicate and important mission for the German government... Within a few weeks, uh, your government and mine will conclude a treaty outlining the German and British spheres of interest in Africa. I see. Obviously, that bomb was thrown this morning by someone who does not wish the treaty to be concluded. Yeah, yeah exactly, Herr Holmes. That is why you must impersonate me. In 24 hours' time, I shall be well enough to resume my work. Uh, in the meanwhile... Uh, you can keep the secret of my injuries and also have the opportunity of finding the assassin. I'm quite prepared to undertake the impersonation, sir, but how can I possibly hope to deceive the members of your personal staff? Uh, with the exception of Franz here and poor Fräulein Ullmeyer, who was killed in the explosion that injured me, uh, my staff is new. Uh, they have joined me here from the German consulate in London. Uh, they will believe that you are me. Very well, sir. I'll try it. I have heard of your skill in the art of uh, disguises, uh, and also it seems to me uh, we are not so uh, unlike each other. I was about to comment on that fact myself, sir. Yes, I think that a moustache and side whiskers will work wonders. 
If I can make the accent reasonably convincing. I will coach you, my friend. <clears throat> the splendid. Help me off with my coat, will you, Franz? Get me towels and a mirror. Jawohl, Herr Holmes. And while I'm applying my makeup, Herr Graf, uh, perhaps you will be so good as to give me the complete circumstances regarding this morning's attempt on your life. If I'm to impersonate you successfully, I must have all the facts at my fingertips. <laughs> Wunderbar. It is amazing, Herr Holmes. Even I can hardly tell you from my master. Yes, I think it's the wig that puts the finish, finishing touch in, to my disguise. How, how did it look to you, Herr Graf? Mm -hmm. Colossal. I feel as if I were looking into a mirror. <laughs> and my accent, you uh, find it reasonably convincing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Extremely so. Try it once again, Herr Holmes. Yeah, Herr Graf. It gives me the greatest pleasure to do what you ask of me. <laughs> Prachtig. Splendid, Herr Holmes. Splendid. Uh, a cab is drawn up at the gate. Two men are getting out. You can see them from the window here. Oh, it's the police possibly, or... Uh... Wait, Scott. It's Watson and Lestrade. Friends of yours, Herr Holmes. Uh, one of them is my uh, close colleague, and the other is a detective inspector from Scotland Yard. Oh, you must keep up the deception, even with your friends. As a matter of fact, my friend's investigations will prove an excellent mask for my own search for the assassin. But, uh, well, this is a delicious situation. I, I hope they won't recognize me. <laughs> Graf Otto von Hildenstein, gentlemen, you wish to see me? Uh, how do you do, sir? My name is Watson, Dr. Watson, and this is Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yard. Uh, how do you do, sir? Inspector, uh, Dr. Watson, may I ask if I have the great distinction of addressing the Dr. Watson, friend of Sherlock Holmes? Oh, I'm very flattered that you know me, Herr Graf. <laughs> but who does not know the great Dr. Watson? In my country, many people think that you are the real brains of the combination. Oh, Tell me, Herr Doctor, is that true? Well, I wouldn't exactly say that. Uh, of course, you have both come here to investigate what occurred this morning. Yes, we have, sir. Uh, sit and see, uh, please sit down. Uh, if you can find any furniture that is unbroken. Oh, thank you, sir. I must say the place is in a bit of a mess. And now, Herr Graf, uh, please tell us exactly what happened. Yeah. I will tell you everything, Herr Doctor. This morning I was working in here with my secretary, poor Fräulein Ulmer. I had occasion to go upstairs to my room to get some necessary papers. As I came down the staircase and to return here, I heard a scream from Fräulein Ulmer. Uh, a moment later, there was a most frightful explosion. The concussion stunned me. When I came to, my poor secretary was dead. Yeah, well, what people were inside the house at the uh, time of the explosion? The servants were all at the church. The only people here was my secretary who was killed, my servant Franz. I can vouch for him because he was upstairs when I went for my documents. There were three other people in the house, however. Madame Lisa Varona, my hostess and the owner of this house. A young Englishman from the home office. His name is Hilary Adams. And the third person in the house was a member of the German embassy, Colonel Schweiger. Oh, then it's just a matter of cross-questioning the three of them as to their alibis at the time of the explosion. Uh, I'll take them one at a time, Lestrade. Ring for that servant fellow. What was his name? Uh, Franz. Yes, uh, Franz, that's what uh, This is a rare privilege to watch a master detective at work. Yes, Herr Graf, I... I shouldn't be surprised if my methods teach you quite a bit about the the art of detection. Herr Dr. Watson, this is Colonel Schweiger of the German Embassy. Uh, where were you, Colonel Schweiger, when the explosion occurred this morning? I was discussing the military tactics of Clausewitz with one of the guards near the front gates. Yeah, well, what was the name of the guard, sir? Carter. And Mr. Arthur Carter. Yeah, I'll, I'll check on that. Uh, thank you, Colonel Schweiger. Please ask Madame Lissa Verona to come in, will you? Questions. Questions. Nothing but questions. Leave me alone. Uh, well, uh, uh, well, sorry, madam. Uh, all I want to know is where were you when the explosion occurred this morning? Where was I? In my boudoir, listening to that stupid dabbling of the young Englishman, Hilary Adams. The graph, when I offered you my house, I did not know that I would have to put up with the love-making of your staff. Everywhere he follows. No, 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 no. Please don't get so excited, Madame Verona. Questions, questions. Stupid young English pop is making calf eyes at me. My beautiful house blown to pieces, and all you do is... 
Mr. Adams, where were you when the explosion occurred? In Madame Verona's suite. You swear to that? Of course I do. You may ask her. I've already done so, sir. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Thank you. That's all. You, you, you may go. Well, Lestrade, did you check on Colonel Schweiger's alibi? Yes, Doctor. He was telling the truth. He was talking to the colonel when the explosion happened. Dear me, Herr Doctor, your examination has not been very successful, has it, sir? Everyone has an alibi. Yes, but the alibis of Madame Verona and the young Englishman, Hilary Adams, depend on each other's words. They might be lying. And you've been dealing with criminals as long as I have, Herr Graf. You learn to look far deeper than the obvious. Yes, the Strad and I shall... Return to London now and make some inquiries. You will hear from me, sir, before the day is over. Ah, <clears throat> yes. Well, oh, I'm much obliged to you, Doctor, for a very nice meal. <laughs> Although we've been talking in circles. Not entirely. Anyway, I have come to one important decision. Oh, and what's that, Doctor? Madame Verona is addicted to the use of drugs. The pupils of her eyes were contracted to pinpoints. It's an invariable indication of drug addiction. Lestrade, you go to Scotland Yard and see what you can find out about her, and I'll go back to my house. You can meet me there later. I can't see a thing. I'll strike a match. That's better. Hello? Who's that in the drawing room? Who is it? Watson! I thought you'd never come. Holmes, where else do you spring from? Never mind that, old chap. I've come to warn you. Keep out of the von Hildenstein business if you value your life. Well, how did you know that I was working on the case? I'm time to tell you now, but I implore you. Keep out of it. There are dangerous forces at work. Forces that would snuff out your life without a thought. Please believe me, old chap. And do as I... Quick, Watson! Out of the dining room! Out of the dining room! Out of the dining You'll hear the rest of Dr. Watson's story in just a few seconds. All the time I need to remind you that, what with this being National Wine Week, if you want to take a gift to a young lady... Why not take her a bottle of Petri California Muscatel? Petri Muscatel is the kind of wine you'd serve a queen. That Petri Muscatel has a flavor of plump, sun-ripened muscat grapes, and is it ever good. You couldn't ask for a more delicious after-dinner wine, or a more delicious wine to serve when company comes. Remember, it's Muscatel, but the important thing is, it's Petri. Petri Muscatel. And now back to Dr. Watson and tonight's adventure, the Manor House case. Well, that was a fine place to break off your story, Doctor, I must <laughs> say. Mr. Bartell, I, I thought I'd keep you in as much suspense as possible. Well, what happened next? Were you and Holmes injured when that bomb exploded? No, no, my boy. The, the concussion of the explosion knocked me out for a few minutes. When I came to, Holmes had disappeared. And I can imagine where he'd gone. Go on, Doctor. Soon after that, Lestrade arrived on the scene, and after a quick and fruitless examination of the premises, we decided to return... Once more to the manor house. And so, an hour later, I was telling my story to the man I still thought to be the Graf Otto von Heldenstein. But this is dreadful, Herr Doctor. The bomb might easily have killed you. Oh, I was ready for it, sir. Quick thinking and presence of mind of my stock in trade, you know. When I heard the glassy crash, I, I found myself under the dining room table. Oh, I'm most distressed that you yourself should be exposed to such oh. danger. Oh, not at all, Herr Graf. As a matter of fact, I exposed myself deliberately to the attack. An old army trick, you know, what we call drawing the enemy's fire. Come now, Doctor. <laughs> you don't mean to tell us that you expected to have that bomb chucked through the window at you? Of course I did, Lestrade. The assassin knew that I was in working on the case. He followed me to London and fell into my trap, just as I intended him to, by uh, 
showing his hand. Well, I don't see what he's got you, Doctor. I myself must admit I cannot see that you are any nearer to finding the murderer. On the contrary, sir, the case is nearly solved. Well, I don't see how you figure that one out, Doctor. In elementary, my dear Lestrade, elementary. One of the three people under suspicion followed me to my house tonight. The second bomb was thrown at approximately seven o'clock. Now, it's only a question of finding which one of the three cannot account for his movements at that time. Then we shall know the murderer. You want to cross-examine them again, Doctor? Yes, Mr. Stard. Bring them in, please. One at a time. Uh, yeah. Colonel Schweiger, where were you at uh, seven o'clock tonight? Discussing the military tactics of Clausewitz with Mr. Carter of the Home Office Guards. Great Scott, that's what were you doing at eleven o'clock this morning, too. It would take many days of discussion for two students to appreciate all the subtleties of Clausewitz. Yeah, I'll check on that again, Doctor. Oh, thank you, Mr. Stard. And uh, please ask Madame Verona to come in, will you? Questions, questions, and still more questions. Where was I seven tonight, you asked me? I was listening to more bubbling from that stupid young Englishman. Ask him for yourself. Mr. Adams, where were you at seven tonight? With Madame Verona in her boudoir. There is a curious sameness about the pattern of life in this house. Is there not here, Doctor? Well, I checked on Colonel Schweiger's statement. It was true. He was talking to Carter at seven o'clock, all right. Uh, well, could the uh, other two account for themselves, Doctor? Well, once again, they alibied for each other, but this time I begin to doubt them. Oh, why, why do you say that, Herr Doctor? Oh, I would accept Madame uh, Verona's alibi for young Adams. Obviously, she loathes the boy and wouldn't perjure herself for him. On the other hand, he worships her, and I'm certain that he wouldn't have any scruples about lying to provide an alibi for her. Well, you've got a point there, Doctor. Yes, I regard her with great suspicion. Here, yeah, come in. Uh... Yes, Mr. Adams? Dr. Watson, I've been worrying about Madame Verona. I was afraid you wouldn't believe my alibi for her. Indeed? I have another, an, an unbiased witness, who can testify that Madame Verona was in this house at seven tonight. Come in, Franz. Jawohl, gnädiger Herr. Franz, did you see Madame Verona at seven tonight? Yeah. I take up uh, two glasses of sherry to her. Uh, it was a few minutes before seven. Uh, thank you, Franz. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Adams. I appreciate your concern. You may go. Yeah. Seems to me we're still traveling in circles, Doctor. On the contrary, my dear Lestrade, the case is solved. Indeed. You astonish me, Herr Doctor. Who is the guilty party? We will know in a minute, sir. Lestrade, bring the three suspects in here, please. Oh, sir. When they are assembled, I will give you the solution to the mystery. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the mystery is solved, and I must apologize for any little convenience, inconvenience that you've undergone. You, Madame Verona, you, Colonel Schweiger, and you, Mr. Adams, have all unshakable alibis. Therefore, the solution is obvious. As my dear friend Sherlock Holmes has often said, eliminate the impossible, and whatever remains, no matter how improbable, is the truth. Therefore, the only person that could have thrown both bombs is you or so, yourself, Graf Otto von Heldenstein. Oh, oh, George, I believe you're right, Doctor. Uh, what have you got to say for yourself, sir? That I, too, Herr Doctor, have an unshakable alibi. Oh, what is it? I was with you, Herr Doctor, when the second bomb was thrown. What tonight. on earth are you talking about? I was alone, sir. Oh, come now, old fellow. That's not true. What? Uh, 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 Holmes. What? Holmes, how, how could you? Mr. Holmes. Well, strike me. Oh, Don't please. be angry with me, old chap. Oh, you made a complete... No, 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 might as well show me up. Oh, my dear Watson, being, stop huh? rating yourself. You really handled the case very well. You made only one mistake. Huh? May I revise that dictum of mine which you uh, just quoted? Eliminate the possible, and then if nothing remains, some part of the impossible must be possible. Which part? Colonel Schmeichel's alibi was valid. So was Madame Verona's, since it was corroborated by the trusty France. But what does your alibi rest on, Mr. Adams? Madame Verona's told you I was here at seven. Yes, but Madame Verona is addicted to the use of drugs. I'm sure that you spotted that back, Watson. Yes, yes, my dear, I did. Your mistake, old chap, was in not drawing the correct conclusion. Mr. Adams' alibi depends on the unsupported word of a drug addict. Now, the use of drugs notoriously destroys, first of all, the sense of time. 
Any trick such as the resetting of clocks could be worked on her without her noticing. Her word on a time alibi is completely valueless. Then Adams is the man who... Fools! Meddlers! Why don't you... Blast you! He's a murderer and a traitor. Well, now that we're back in Baker Street, Watson, I may as well tell you that I had my uh, suspicions of Adams from the first. You did? Why? Well, my brother Mycroft had told me that he was suspected of being a traitor at heart. He's been under observation for some years. He was purposely given this assignment as a definite test of his integrity. Well, I understand it all now, Holmes. It's the same. I did make it. I asked myself in front of Lestrade, too. Oh, don't worry about it, old chap. Please don't worry. You you always uh, can correct that impression, you know. Yours will be the last word. Huh? How do you mean? Well, when you come to write this story in your memoirs, my dear fellow, you can always do a little, uh, what should we say, uh, re-editing of your own part. Posterity never need know. Doctor, that was really a swell story. Oh, I'm glad you liked it, sort of. Made me out of a bit of a fool, though. Oh, nothing of the kind, Doctor. I agree with Holmes. You did a splendid job. Oh, you really think After it? all, you, you did line up his suspects for him, didn't you? Well, uh, well, come to think of it, yes, 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 of course I did. And you did make the point that Madame Verona was a drug addict. Yes, yes, by Joe, so I did. And you did say that Mr. Adams' alibi could be a lie. By Joe, you're right. I did solve that case for Holmes after all. Mr. Bartell, did anyone ever tell you that you, you're really a very smart young man? I... I wish you and I could work on a case together. We can, starting tonight. No. Uh, really? Sure. In celebration of National Wine Week, I brought you a case of Petri wine. And I suggest we start on it right now with a glass of port. <laughs> what a fellow. <laughs> what a wine. <laughs> Petri wine. We know that's really good because the Petri family has been making fine wine since the 1800s. For generations, ever since they started the Petri business, the Petri family has been turning luscious California grapes into fragrant, delicious wine. And during all that time, they've been handing on down from father to son, from father to son, all their skill and knowledge and experience. The Petri wine you buy today is the result of all that skill and knowledge and experience. That's why you can't go wrong when you choose a Petri wine, because Petri took time to bring you good wine. And now, Dr. Watson, what's the prescription for next week's story? Well, now, let me see. Next week, Mr. Bartell, I think I can promise you a most entertaining adventure. It concerns a famous magician, a female spy of unusual beauty, and a man even more brilliant than Holmes himself, his older brother, Mycroft. Sounds terrific, Doctor. And before we say goodnight to our friends, I want to remind them that our men overseas need the Merchant Marine to bring them back home. The Merchant Marine got them there, and it'll bring them back. If you help. Right now, the Merchant Marine needs experienced mates, engineers, ABs, firemen, oiler, water tenders, and chief cooks. If you qualify, write or wire collect at once to Merchant Marine, Washington 25, D.C. Bring the boys home. <laughs> Tonight's Sherlock Holmes adventure is written by Dennis Green and Anthony Boucher and was suggested by an incident in the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle story, The Greek Interpreter. Mr. Rathbone appears through the courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer and Mr. Bruce through the courtesy of Universal Pictures, where they are now starring in the Sherlock Holmes series. The Petri Wine Company of San Francisco, California, invites you to tune in again next week, same time, same station. This is Harry Bartell saying good night for the Petri family. Sherlock Holmes comes to you from our Hollywood studios. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.